The eyes to the right, 202. Ooh. The nose to the left, 432. Wow. The eyes to the right, 202. The nose, oh dear. The eyes to the right, 202. The nose to the left, 432. So the nose have it, the nose have it. Unlock! On a point of, indeed, point of order, the Prime Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, the House has spoken and the Government will listen. It is clear that the House does not support this deal, but tonight's vote tells us nothing about what it does support. Nothing about how nothing about how or even if it intends to honour the decision the British people took in a referendum Parliament decided to hold. And people, particularly EU citizens who have made their home here, and UK citizens living in the EU, deserve clarity on these questions as soon as possible. Order! Order! There are good people shouting. There will be an opportunity for other points of order, but the Prime Minister must and will be heard. The Prime Minister. Those whose jobs rely on our trade with the EU need that clarity. So, with your permission, Mr Speaker, I'd like to set out briefly how the Government intends to proceed. First, we need to confirm whether this Government still enjoys the confidence of the House. I believe that it does, but given the scale and importance of tonight's vote, it's right that others have the chance to test that question if they wish to do so. I can therefore confirm that if the official opposition table a confidence motion this evening, in the form required by the Fixed Term Parliaments Act, the Government will make time to debate that motion tomorrow. And if, as happened before Christmas, the official opposition declined to do so, we will, on this occasion, consider making time tomorrow to debate any motion in the form required from the other opposition parties, should they put one forward. Second, second if the House confirms its confidence in this Government, I will then hold meetings with my colleagues, our confidence and supply partner, the DUP, and senior parliamentarians from across the House to identify what would be required to secure the backing of the House. The Government will approach these meetings in a constructive spirit, but given... But given, given the ne urgent need to make progress, we must focus on ideas that are genuinely negotiable and have sufficient support in this House. Third, if these meetings yield such ideas, the Government will then explore them with the European Union. Mr Speaker, I want to end by offering two reassurances. The first is to those who fear that the Government's strategy is to run down the clock to the 29th of March. That is not our strategy. I have always believed that the best way forward is to leave in an orderly way with a good deal and have devoted much of the last two years negotiating such a deal. As you confirmed, Mr Speaker, the amendment to the business motion tabled last week by my right honourable and learned friend, the Member for Beaconsfield, is not legally binding, but the Government respects the will of the House. We will therefore make a statement about the way forward and table an amendable motion by Monday. The second reassurance is to the British people who voted to leave the European Union in the referendum two and a half years ago. I became Prime Minister immediately after that referendum. I believe it is my duty to deliver on their instruction, and I intend to do so. Every day that passes without this issue being resolved means more uncertainty, more bitterness and more rancour. The Government have heard, has heard what the House has said tonight, but I ask members on all sides of the House to listen to the British people who want this issue settled and to work with the Government to do just that. Uh, I will come to other colleagues, but first of all, point of all, the Leader of the Opposition, Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The results of tonight's vote is the greatest defeat for a Government since the 1920s in this House. This is a catastrophic defeat for this Government. After two years of failed negotiations, the House of Commons has delivered its verdict on her Brexit deal, and that verdict is absolutely decisive. 
I hear the words of the Prime Minister, but actions of a government of the past two years speak equally clearly. She is only attempting to reach out now to try to keep her failed process and deal alive after it's been so roundly rejected by Parliament on behalf of the people of this country. Labour has laid out our priorities consistently. No deal, no deal must be taken. No deal must be taken off the table. A permanent customs union must be secured and people's rights and protections must be guaranteed so they do not fall behind. At every turn, the Prime Minister has closed the door on dialogue. Businesses begged her to negotiate a comprehensive customs union. Trade union leaders pressed her for the same thing. They were ignored. In the last two years, she's only had one priority, the Conservative Party. Her governing principle of delay and denial has reached the end of the line. She cannot seriously believe that after two years of failure, she is capable of negotiating a good deal for the people of this country. The most important issue facing us is that the Government has lost the confidence of this House and this country. I therefore, Mr Speaker, inform you I have now tabled a motion of no confidence yeah. in this Government. Yeah. And I am pleased, pleased that motion will be debated tomorrow, so this House can give its verdict on the sheer incompetence of this Government. Yeah. And that motion of no confidence in the government. I'll come to, uh, yeah, first of all, uh, just come to the leader. I will come to the right honourable gentleman, of course, but a point of order the leader of the House. With permission, Mr. Speaker, I should like to make a short business statement regarding the business for tomorrow and the remainder of this week. I'm extraordinarily grateful to the Right Honourable Lady, and I accept that she can't be psychic as to what I'm thinking, and I can't be psychic as to what she's thinking. I think the smooth and orderly way to proceed with this matter is to deal with points of order first, and then to come to the Right Honourable Lady's statement, which would be entirely proper and doubtless helpful to the House. A point of order, Mr. Ian Blackford. We should be aware of the situation that we're in. The clock is ticking. We have got very little time to resolve this. The fact that it has taken us so long to get to this point, frankly, is shameful. This is a humiliating defeat yeah. for the government. Yeah. When I listen to the Prime Minister, it sounds like everybody else is at fault yeah. rather than her. Uh, yeah, yeah, has yeah, to absolutely. accept responsibility for what has happened this evening. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I'm delighted that the Leader of the Opposition has come round to a motion of no confidence. This should have happened before, but of course uh, we will support it. Mr Speaker, as I mentioned, it is clear the clock is ticking. The Government needs to secure the safety of all our nations and should immediately postpone the Article 50 process and should immediately have talks with all the leaders of the opposition parties. Let's work together in all our interests, but let's listen to the voices of the parliamentarians that have been sent here. There is no support for this deal. It must come back again. The obvious thing to do, the right thing to do, suspend Article 50, put this to the people in a people's vote. Yeah. I know the right honourable gentleman won't take offence when I say he was using the device of a point of order, as is entirely understandable in these circumstances, to say what he wanted to say, but he was more interested in what he had to say to the House than in anything that I might have to say to him. It's not a matter for the Chair. The Right Honourable Gentleman has registered his view, and these are the sorts of issues that can quite properly be aired in debate and quite conceivably in discussions that take place with the Prime Minister and other party leaders. But he's made his point with force and alacrity, and it's on the record for colleagues to study. A point, uh, I will take uh, the Honourable Lady first, uh, Right Honourable Lady first, and then uh, others. A point of order, Jo Swinson. Mr Speaker, with this result of a scale that uh, is unprecedented in recent times, it is clear that this deal, nor any tweaks to it, will get through 
the House of Commons. So can I ask for your guidance, Mr Speaker, on how Parliament can assert its authority to make sure that we can give the people of this country a say on this deal to resolve this matter. It is a mess that needs to be resolved by the people in a people's vote. Uh, well, my response to the Honourable Lady is as follows. First of all, there may well be an opportunity for her to air her own thoughts on that matter, the situation we face and the suggested way forward in the course of debate uh, to which the Prime Minister in her point of order referred, there is that prospect potentially unfolding. So that's one opportunity for the Honourable Lady. And the second would be those discussions to take place in coming days. And I dare say that the Honourable Lady will want to take the chance to participate in those. More widely, where there is discussion about Parliament's role and what Parliament might do and what options Parliament might have, I think I can predict with complete confidence that the Honourable Lady will have a view about that. And that view, which is important, will be heard.